having found success with its previous Company of Heroes 2 standalone expansion, the multiplayer-only Western Front Armies, Relic is looking to repeat the trick with Arden's Assault, only this time it's all about the single player. 1944 is the year and the Battle of the Bulge is the World War II conflict at the heart of the game. Not an historically accurate retelling of those events though, but rather a chance for players to influence and change the events of that year. How so? Well, the campaign is set across a map of Belgium split into different regions, each representing individual battles for you to fight and conquer. Win a skirmish in a region and it's under your control for the rest of the campaign, but the impact of dismantling German positions is felt elsewhere. Taking a particular region can cause enemy reinforcements to populate an adjacent area, which in turn forces you to rethink your original strategy for something more reactive, lest those fresh dangers get out of hand. Oh shit, Panzers! Scramble AT support! Replayability is the aim here with the emphasis firmly placed on multiple playthroughs creating new conflicts and problems. It works rather well, in part thanks to the additional complexity that comes via featuring three different companies, Support, Mechanize and Airborne. There are unique abilities for each, but what's important is to stay aware of their health and experience levels. Using a specific company in battle is both a risk and a reward in that it's possible for them to die and take no further part in the campaign, but then winning engagements is the only way to improve their skills. It's all very well and good saying that you're going to concentrate on making your mechanized company as good as it can possibly be, but if they end up being wiped out, your remaining support and airborne units are going to find it very tough going if they've never been in battle before. Like it or not, presuming you're playing on a challenging difficulty level, all three companies must be thought of as a single, larger entity. We're stronger together, after all. This becomes especially poignant when deciding which areas of the map to attack, with each company. The three move around the map independently of one another, meaning it's possible, if you're not thinking ahead, for one to get cut off from the others and potentially become surrounded by the Germans. Here you have a tough choice to make. Does the greater goal make an attempted rescue worthwhile, or would you be better off continuing with the original plan and hoping the besieged company can make it out alive? Skills-wise, Support Company specialises in explosives, Airborne is in its element when positioned behind enemy lines, and Mechanized is like a combination of the two, requiring equal parts courage and contemplation. While there are plenty of welcome changes to companies, the cool rules dictating combat remain largely the same as in Company of Heroes 2, which is no bad thing. Capture points must be controlled to earn resources that can be spent to improve and buff your forces, while staying behind cover and intelligently taking advantage of high ground and differing terrain conditions makes it incredibly difficult for the enemy to catch you unawares. Company of Heroes 2's combat was skillful and considered, and Arden's Assault does a great job of adding to those fun mechanics and does so without damaging what was so great about them in the first place. Expansion it may be, but from what we've seen so far, there's plenty of new stuff to get excited for when Arden's Assault comes to PC on November 18th.